Uh, hello, good evening, and it's Friday night. Welcome to the Insane Asylum Podcast. I'm Joe Mark. He's missing in action. He's got some internet issues. Uh, we're joined with our guest, Darren Buss, Phantom Paranormal, and you're also part of BB3TV as yep. well. And Paranormal uh, Brew. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from. Well, <laughs> I know where you're from, but, you know, <laughs> that special place we've talked about. <laughs> right, right. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to the uh, podcast tonight. Um, uh, like Joe said, I'm part of Phantasm Paranormal. Um, I did have a, a team that's kind of in the background for now, which is MGS Paranormal, which is most of you know me by. Um, I live in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Um, so, um, yeah, it's it's been kind of a, an adventure road. Um, my first uh, paranormal experience was uh, back when I was about seven years old. Um, I had a, a dual paranormal event, which is unusual. Uh, I was at a friend's house playing pool, like by myself, like a, a normal seven year old would be. And, uh, you know, I had a TV against the wall and then there's, you know, it's a, it's a basement within a basement. So there's an outer layer and, um, uh, you know, I was, I was playing and then the TV popped on and by itself, I'm like, okay, I went, I'm unplugged the TV. But as I was moving around, I, I swear that there was a, a coat rack about 20 feet back that was moving closer to me. I'm like, that's kind of odd, but you know, I'm like, I'll, I'll just keep playing. And so, um, and then as I was playing around pool and the TV popped on by itself again with, even though I unplugged it, it still popped on. I'm like, okay, this is freaky now. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so and back then too we we played with a ouija board and you know when you're seven years old you don't really know what it is you just think it's just a game you know yeah uh, it was marketed as a game of all things right right and um so i was continue to play and speed it up and as i went back with the pool stick i hit something and here that coat rack was standing right next to me wow and i'm like okay i'm done <laughs> I ran upstairs and never went down there by myself ever again. Uh, but uh, that was the first time I had a paranormal, paranormal experience. Um, you know, I just uh, <clears throat> had uh, odd things happen. Um, my wife's apartment was haunted. Uh, she didn't realize that uh, uh, someone hung themselves in there. So that was kind of crazy. And then, um, so we had some stuff there. Our first house was haunted. Um, we had, uh, it was a shared driver that we lived in, but, um, a gentleman died upstairs. It was once an apartment, I guess. So he died upstairs and my wife didn't tell me till two years after he moved out of the house that she saw somebody, uh, saw, saw the ghost in the house and I didn't. So. I'm like, why didn't, why did you wait so long to tell me, you know? Uh, but we always, always knew that something was odd with the house. Uh, even though we lived down by the college, it was, it was just weird in general. Um, and then we had our sign up, you know, to move. And we got up um, back home from north, up north. About five minutes later, also, here this crash. And we go up front and here the sign is knocked down and it's all covered in blood. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Something really does not want us to move. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I mean, that was that's kind of more of the the paranormal events that have happened in 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 my life. Um, you know, I I got see the angel numbers a lot. Um, I am kind of sense when I feel like you know when you're watching TV, you someone pops in your head and like hey i think there's something wrong with this person you text them or call them and sure enough something was going on so uh, i get that every once in a while but uh that happens to me a lot 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a weird feeling when you get that. Yeah. Ever since I had uh, that, like out of, out of body near death experience where I was knocking on death's door fighting cancer ever Mm -hmm. since then, it started out like real, real weak and faint, you know, where, where, you know, I get a bad feeling that something bad's going to happen to somebody. And the next thing you know, I'm getting a phone call. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, within like 24 hours, or, you know, in the next day or something. And yeah. over time, it, it got to the point where I can almost sense who it is. Right. You know, within like, you know, name a couple of people and it's usually one of those two people. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's, it's, it's happened a lot to me. I mean, it's just it's just when you're watching tv it's just like okay or you're on your phone and you're just you're you're popping on and awesome wham and something hits you and it's like okay well i think something's right right here and yeah me me it's like i get a bad feeling that's what i call it it's like you know something strange i can't explain it it's hard to explain to a person that doesn't experience it you know Right, right. And, you know, in fact, that, that actually brings up a, a, a topic about uh, how people don't experience things and uh, they don't believe in this stuff. Uh, I, I There's a co-worker today that came up to me and goes, so what podcast are you on and, and stuff like that? And I was telling him about podcasts and I was telling him about this one tonight. And, and then we got into a discussion and he goes, I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe in hell. I just believe that when we're dead we're gone and that's it. And then, so we kind of got into a lot of stuff. That's a scary thought. Yeah. You know, somebody to go around believing that there is nothing like game over. That's it. Yeah. You know, to me, that's like my worst nightmare come true. Right. He thinks it's just total blackness. It's just darkness. that 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 scares the hell out of me yeah it really does Um, i like to believe that maybe there's reincarnation or maybe our energy that that you know the bodies you know everything's made up of energy around us right no so maybe our energy goes someplace else to another plane of existence or something Yep. you know i don't want to believe it's game over yeah, and he started talking about dimensions, about the uh, fourth and fifth and uh, eleven dimensions and stuff like that. And it, it was a good fifteen-minute solid conversation we had about stuff. And I was explaining, I was like, "Well, there's you know seven levels to heaven, and there's about the same to for hell, and then there's the in between. You know, for those who died really quick and have no idea that they're dead, purgatory, right? So, um. But it was it was a good conversation. So uh, I think he no, understands a lot more now after having that conversation. He, I think it might have changed his mind a little bit. Well, yeah, that just goes to show he had an open mind to begin with. Yeah. You know, because there are them people that I find that sometimes they're like, you're just, you're a lunatic, man. You need to be locked up if you believe that crap's out there or whatever. You know, and there's no change in their mind. They don't even want to hear things. And it's like, yeah, well, (laughs) yeah. You know, you got to have an open mind in this life nowadays. Yep. The world has been flipped on its head. Yeah, yeah, the world's gone crazy. And it's not flat, by the way. Yeah. (laughs) That's a good one. (laughs) I love that one. Yeah, I, I don't believe. Oh, yeah, it's just the way you're looking at it. What <laughs> you're saying all these years is technology has gotten better, and we've gotten into space and taken these pictures and proved that it's one big ball. You're telling me it's still flat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're looking okay. at a square. Come on, people. <laughs> you know, I just don't buy that either, but you know. <laughs> I, I, I got to go around, you know, I go around and saying, I like to say it a lot at the end of this podcast and a lot of the things I do on, on online is 
saying anything's possible. Right. You know, when I was in high school early on, there was uh, a biology teacher and and he was talking about all kinds of things and we're saying, oh, that ain't possible. Oh, you, you know, and he's like, if you keep an open mind and you think about it, it's like it may not be possible in my lifetime. Yeah. But if you get enough people together, it could be possible. So anything's possible. There's, oh, a well, solution sure. that, there's a solution to everything. So anything's possible. That's that that was his scientific point of view on things. And it was like, oh, you can pick all the grass out of my yard by hand. It's like that, you know, one by one. I don't think so. You know, he was coming up with like these real crazy type ideas to get us to, you know, react to it you know, to participate in his discussion. And and the, I, I got to tell you, for a small town school, that was one of my favorite teachers, mm -hmm. you know, because he made class interesting. But again, it goes to show anything's possible. Yeah, absolutely. And then people live in the Minecraft world that just think it's just Minecraft out there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't get caught in those games anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was for seven years, but it wasn't Minecraft. It was Final Fantasy. Yeah. See, I played Doom uh, games like Doom and stuff like that. That's a little more characteristic and a little dark, but I like those games, though. I get Thanks. hooked on them too easily. Yeah. And then I end up spending all my time playing those games. Yeah. You know, and, and I can't do that. No more. Right. I, I like doing what I do. You know, I like doing what I do now. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it may not be a job. It may not give me money. I may be in, you know, paying out more money than I take in or whatever. But the thing is, I'm finding answers. I'm gaining some valuable history knowledge mm -hmm. on all kinds of places around Wisconsin. I'm getting to see places I've never been to, you know, right. I'm having fun and enjoying life. And that's what this is supposed to be is the, it's slash a hobby, but it's also a very interesting part of life of what we get to figure out and find out. Yeah. At the same time, I get to try out some of the new technology that they're coming out with every day. Yeah. Uh, we get to meet some very interesting people. Mm -hmm. um and, learn new and, techniques and and we if we get lucky enough to find some evidence we get to share it with the community right you know yeah and say, this is what we got what's your opinion exactly i mean i mean i know there's a lot of people that like to show orbs and stuff like that i'm i'm not a very <laughs> big orb person uh, I've only seen like three or four in my lifetime, but, uh, you know, we all believe it. 99% of it's dust, you know, or bugs or bugs. Yeah. So, but uh, the thing is, is, it's fine though. If you want to post it, post it because I'm one of those people that will look at it. We'll look at anything, even if it's your, uh, video from your, your, um, surveillance camera that you're showing on there and stuff like that like oh is that a lens flare or is that something else you know uh i'm not one to uh criticize or tear apart people because you know damn well that they're gonna do that right back to you three times fold well i look at it this way we put up what we get what you see or what we see is what you see you know mm -hmm. no real editing involved but we put it up there, one, so other people can see what happened or what didn't happen. And maybe you'll see something we missed. Right. You know, maybe you'll help us debunk it if it's possible. You know, right. we don't we don't even put up what we think it is sometimes, you know. I yeah. mean, we just go out there, we explain what we're, you know, a little bit of the history what people say has been happening there and 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 you see exactly 
the investigation as it played out that night. Right. right. No fancy Hollywood editing except letting you know who we are at the beginning of it and a little bit of credits given thanks to people at the end. Mm-hmm. That's it. Nothing in between. Yeah. You yep. know, plain and simple. Oh. Yeah. And the, and the name of the game is to be respectful to everybody, uh, have an open mind and, and, and learn to take the good with the bad um, and say, you know, and, and not always think you're right all the time. That's the thing. That's right. You know, uh, hey, I put this up. Oh, that's not what it is. Oh, I guess not. Just, I guess you're right. Okay. Move on to the next one. Right. You, you know. Uh, life is too short to to sit there and and BS with people about stuff that's no reason to be, to BS about. Yeah, I mean, life, you know, it is that's a waste of emotion and energy to be arguing with people over something that's literally all theories, anyways. Right, right. We're all going after the same thing. We're all looking for different ways to get our same our, our same views. Uh, and uh, if it's this experiment or that experiment, if it works, great. I mean, I'm, I'm happy for it. It works. Um, you know, I throw ex- experiments out there when I do lives. And I'm like, hey, if this is what you want to try, go ahead and try it. If it works for you, good. You know, I'm not going to hold back and say, no, you can't try it. I mean, it's a free world. Right. You know, and, and that's that sometimes is what bugs me about this industry is that people find stuff and say, oh, I found that first. So my name's on it. And, you know, um, I tried this experiment, so I'm not going to tell you what it is, because then somebody else will take that and market it and and and, and trademark it and stuff like that. And then now I lost out an idea. But I'm like, dude, it, it goes both ways. Yeah, I, you know, I don't, I never worry about that myself because, you know, somebody wants to trademark an idea or whatever, you know, that's just called greed. Yeah. You know, most of the people I've met, there's small, you know, there's always bad apples in every little group, but most of the people I've met, they're willing to share their experiences, their stories, their ideas what worked what didn't work for them and and it's been nothing but a a pleasant experience for me there has been those few and and you get to weed those out pretty quick because they're all in for the 15 minutes of fame Mm -hmm. or to make the money yeah you know they're like oh i'm gonna start this and i'm gonna start this paracon and i'm gonna charge 40 50 dollars and 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 serve you shit for food you know i've seen that happen yeah you know and i'm not saying there's anything wrong for charging for the paracons because you know the person's time uh right. setting it up and it's, it's a lot of work and a lot of time plus the venues will cost money you know they don't always donate the venues you know right i can understand that but there's a limit to what you can take yeah you know most of the good ones that I've been to have been free to like about 25 bucks. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And you got another good one coming up at uh, Broadhead Manor in June 1st and 2nd. Uh, Spirits in the Spring. So. Yeah, I'm going to be somewhere else. Yeah. Um, I'm going to see the Honky Tonk Man, hopefully. Oh, yeah, that's right. And Oshkosh. Yeah. Good old Honky Tonk Man. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, I, I don't, <clears throat> I don't care to be famous. You're never going to make money doing this thing. Uh, you shell out more money than you make it. Yep. But the thing is, is you're getting results and you're getting what you want. Well, and you, at the and you same think time, of new ideas. And at the same time for me, it's also a little personal Yeah. because for me, I'm doing all these other podcasts besides the paranormal one. I'm not doing it to get famous. For me, it's a personal reason. I'm doing it to leave a a, like living legacy of me when I'm gone. Because I've got kids and grandkids. 
Yeah. I'm already past my expiration date, according to the doctors. Right. You know, this way they got more than just pictures. Right. Absolutely. You know, that'll live on online forever for them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the other reason. I, I'm not in it for money. I'm not in it to be famous. I was, I'm more of a loner. I've got a small circle of friends. I like to keep it that. Yeah. I don't like big crowds. I, you know, I do go to the conventions and stuff because I like meeting people, hearing their stories, making new connections, and 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 maybe even doing an investigation together because right. it's kind of fun too. You know. Yeah, I mean, the Paracons. I find it where we could do this, you know, interview right. people, right? You know, get their story out there, get their their lifestyle, what they like to do out there, because, right. you know, that's what they believe in. So if they have the time and energy to go to these things and, and express what they believe in, then, hey, come on the show. Let's talk about it. Get yeah, you out I found there. some of my guests that way. Yeah. You know, I've gone to a couple of these. That I was part of the Milwaukee Paracon as a guest speaker a couple of years ago. I think I was at that one. You know, and 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 we did a big, huge thing on Bray Road. Okay. And and we had the property owner there as our guest. So, it, it, he actually helped me over my stage fright. So I mean, the paranormal and this whole thing got me over that too. Yeah. So. But I, I found it really enjoyable. I mean, I liked going there. I like walking around. I like seeing what they have to offer at the vendor tables. I like talking to all the different groups, you know, learning, you know, where they go, what their favorite places are, their experiences. And, and a lot of times I end up, you know, hey, here's my card contact me later and we'll set up a, a thing where you can be a guest and we can talk some more and yeah it works out right you know absolutely my camera's a little touchy <laughs> yeah i bump my cable that happens too <laughs> i mean i made since we've done this in 2019 we've had a lot of people on our show, uh, but we've made a lot of friends that way to the point where we've got a trip we're planning out and we're going to go to Illinois, Indiana, up into Michigan, and then back home all within a week. And um, when we get to Michigan, one of the people that's uh, is going to try to get us into, um, yeah, and... Eloise. Oh, okay. Yep. So um, I'm hoping that works out, but see, it's like that guest that was on our show. I've been talking to them, these people and they're like, Oh, we've got connections there at Eloise. Yeah. I was supposed to go there in March of this year, but, uh, nothing ever came out of it. So I think the idea kind of just got dropped. So, you know, we got this, we've been planning this out since last year. Yeah. And, and I'm going to meet up with, uh, Jer, uh, not Jeremy, uh, Nick and Kate and a couple of people from the things network down in, in, in Illinois. Again, I've mm -hmm. met Nick down there a couple of times now. Um, and I want to go to resurrection cemetery. I also want to get into Joliet prison while I'm down there. Oh, uh, that one you won't be able to yet. Yeah, they've got, they, they, they're opening up. I was just down there about three weeks ago okay. and I took pictures. Um, they're in the middle of, I'm, I don't know what it is. It looks like some kind of construction, but they got a big sign that they'll be opening back up for tours soon. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I was there no last specific year. For a page, but, 
So, yeah, July I was out there last year for a self guided tour. So that was interesting. Yeah. So, so that's part of that, and then we're gonna go to Illinois and meet up with Jeremy York and a few other people out there. I don't or Indiana, and I don't know what's gonna happen for that yet. Indiana State Cement uh, Sanatorium, maybe. Yeah, I haven't talked to Jeremy yet more about that. <laughs> I will as it gets closer. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, that's one of our big trips for the year. And then, of course, we've been going back every year. We've been going back to Bray Road. We'll be going back again this year for an overnight. And hopefully this time we can make it overnight. <laughs> last time we got kicked off the property yeah not by the owner he was fast asleep at this point in his little whatever you call it it was like a little like apartment inside of his uh i don't know what you call those like pole barns or whatever you know that they, they just put up real quick you know yeah anyway we got chased off by the property itself. All right. We were tracking uh, a bipedal figure in the cornfield. And this mm -hmm. was right around midnight or so. And Dale Kazmarek and myself had lost track of it on the thermal. And we're sitting there talking and saying, well, it's probably following Mark. And Mark was halfway down, running right along. He was walking right alongside the cornfield, but he was way out of earshot. <laughs> and apparently on, on all of his, uh, like, body camera and, and stuff that he had, you could hear him talking like something was in the cornfield following him. So when he comes back, he's like, something, I think something was following me in the cornfield. You know, and we're like, well, that's about the time we lost track of what we saw in the thermal. Yeah. And we're still sitting there and we're waiting again. We wanted to try to be there until like five, six, seven o'clock in the morning. That was the idea because the trail cams that's on this property constantly, they get triggered with all these unexplained pictures right around that time hmm. so here is a couple hours later after our little sighting and fog rose in as thick as pea soup and fast i've never seen it i li lived in wisconsin all my life i've never seen fog roll in that fast and that thick so we pack up real quick and we're packing up, you know, 10 minutes later or five minutes later, we're back out there with flashlights, making sure we didn't miss nothing and the fog's gone. Yeah. Just as quick as it came in. <laughs> Jeez. You know, and if that fog wouldn't have came in, we would have been fine. But we right. didn't want our equipment, you know, you know what equipment costs, you know, that oh, shit, yeah. you don't want to get destroyed. Right, right. But it, it, it's a very interesting place. I was very intrigued by that place when we first visited it. And then later I learned it was uh, dubbed the Skinwalker Ranch of Wisconsin because of all the various activity that's on it. It's not just the dog man that's yeah. there. It's, yeah, I'm hoping that when we go back, it'll be a, another eventful night. You know. As long as it's a full moon, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. We picked a date uh, that's going to coincide with um, Dale because Merrick's got a paranormal investigator coming in from England. Okay. So that's going to be joining us that day. Actually, that's going to be a three three step investigation with bray road being the last stop on the investigation we're going back to um 
Valley of the Kings. You ever hear of that place? It's a uh, wildlife preserve. I can't think of exactly where where it's located at, but um, there was something about a trailer there that's haunted. You know, like I'm talking a trailer that's like the back of a semi truck trailer, mm -hmm. and it's got some activity, and they've had some activity. But it's a huge wildlife preserve. It's kind of interesting to walk around there at night right one you've got all these feral cats running around mm. you know attacking you and sitting on your car and all that all these house cats basically <laughs> but then you're walking by some of the cages and uh some of those cages have tigers um wolves they've got everything from a grizzly bear to black bear to you, you name it they've got the wildlife there right but apparently in the trailer um if i remember this correctly somebody was killed by one of the tigers in that trailer Oof. that's not good and then after that, we're going over to Alpine Valley area. Yeah, to, I heard about that. Uh, for the, I can't, Stevie Ray Vaughan crash site. And that's all done before Bray Road. Hmm. Yeah, I'd like to get to um, High Cliff State Park, walk around there. I don't know that place is pretty well haunted. Uh, it's been stated, and I know Badgerland Paranormal's been out there. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, Sheboygan Asylum. I'll be heading there on the twenty fourth for an overnight. I've been trying to get a hold of those people. Yeah, uh, I can't remember who that is too, and I, I know who they are. I've been trying to get in there too. Yeah. That's on my list. Yeah, I think it's an eight-hour investigation we're doing. Um, and I'll be at the museum tomorrow, tomorrow night. And that museum is, so that uh, the viewers know. So the museum is the Bashir County Historical Museum and Society in uh, Watoma, Wisconsin. Um, so if you're familiar with the story with Plainfield... And what they call the Plainfield Butcher. Um, and they also, uh, he's got movies that are based off of him. Like, uh, uh, that, there you go. Yep. Um, so, and, uh, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, yeah. All Psycho. Those... What's that? Psycho. Psycho, yep. Um, um. Another one out there, um, Silence of the Lambs. Yep, that's it. Silence yep. of the Lambs. Yep. And uh, but the thing is, is I I don't make that um, a a priority for that location. He just happens to be one of the spirits that are there, um, along with his mom, Augusta. That's because isn't he buried in like an unmarked grave in Plainfield? So he is. In Plainfield, uh, his, next to his mother, <laughs> um, they're both in concrete, so they cannot be stolen. Um, but his headstone is not there because the headstone has been stolen twice. Right. And it is now in somebody's basement and where it will stay. Uh, we talked about getting into the museum, but we thought best against it and said, eh, it probably wouldn't be a good thing to bring in. Um we have enough stuff there already uh, that involves him. Um, we have his uh, shotguns, uh, one of the three knives that he used on his victims, um, his skis. So uh, the energy is there. I mean, it's 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 there. It's all yeah. in a case. Well, uh, th there was a, an interesting piece while we're on him that, that I really got to talk about. 
I talked to a gentleman, I can't remember his name, but he worked at Mendota. Okay. During the time that Ed Ed was still there mm -hmm. and still alive before he passed away. And this guy used to talk to him. And eventually after after Ed passed away, and he passed away in his rocking chair right. in his room. Nineteen eighty four. Died in his sleep, right? This guy has got that rocking chair in storage. Really? Yeah, I was supposed to meet with him, and then COVID happened, so right. it didn't. Yeah. It didn't, you know. And I've since lost contact with him. His number changed and shit. So interesting. That would be a kind of a cool thing to put in a jail cell. Yeah. I mean, um, just imagine the energy that's probably attached to that chair. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You would you would think, um, and and like I said before, that with 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 the stuff that we have for the trigger objects at this museum, um, and it's an extra cost donation cost to to hold on to these things, um, and I I've seen some weird stuff. Um, I've seen the knife literally jump off of people's hands. I've, uh, I have changed personality holding it. Um, and it, that's the thing. You don't realize you're changing your personality unless someone actually tells you. And I was on live when that happened. And, uh, the lady that I was talking to, which is Cynthia Dorotius, um, and that's, she's from, uh, Raven Rose Paranormal out of Iowa. Um, so um she's like hey something's not right with you and i says what do you mean he says i investigated with you long enough to know that this ain't you put down the knife and sit down <laughs> so oh so that's yeah she's like your whole personality shifted completely um so people do get crazy with it uh some people cry uh very emotional and there's times too where I don't even open it, and they're sitting in the in the cell, and it's like ah, it's kind of getting boring in here. Nothing's really happening, and we all know that Augusta was a, a a Bible beater. So I said, well, bring in a Bible and start reading out of the Bible. Maybe you'll get something out of Augusta. And if that's not enough, then I'll say, okay, I'll go open it up and see what happens. And you know, once I open it up, then almost all the equipment. <clears throat> all the equipment goes off and it goes wow. crazy for about an hour, hour and a half. You know, settle down. Uh, small town paranormal call a lot of good stuff. Um, Traveler's Moon call a lot of good stuff. Phantasm Paranormal, the team I'm with, uh, caught a lot of great stuff, especially in the upstairs uh, jail part too. Uh, that's interesting with a German soldier. Um, so the museum is, is, is focused on a lot of things. The, the jail can be hot. It can be cold. Uh, so it, every place has its uh, lull time. Um, the house side of things, uh, we have a lot of kid spirits, a lot of uh, adult spirits in that side. Um, so it's, it's an array of spirits. Uh, doctors, you know, they're there as a spirit as well. Dentist is there as a spirit. Um, so Wasn't there an old schoolhouse on that property? The old schoolhouse is actually a mile back behind. Okay. So, but that is part of the investigation as well. It's a 18, from the 1850s. And, uh, that gets very crazy with, uh, uh, the more time you spend in there, like a lot of times too, people go like, oh, the first time, like, oh, we didn't get a whole lot of stuff. And I was like, oh come back next time because you know the first time when you go to these locations is that these spirits are studying you just as much as you're studying them right and then the next time you go back then they're ready to ready to play you know um i've had doors shut on people during tours um, well you know that that would make more sense considering that especially when you're dealing with a schoolhouse you know you're dealing with kids still yep so you know, kids are like, especially then, you know, don't talk to strangers. Yeah. You know, so they're like, okay, 
you know, you know, like you said, they're studying you. And then when you come back, you've gained a little bit of their trust for them to do something, play their little games with you or whatever. Right. You know. And that goes for every location too. There's, And there's some locations that you, they don't need like a study time. Like they'll be active right away. Or you know. Or they can just, sense that they don't like you and want you gone. Yeah. That, yeah. that, and that is true. You know. Yeah. Um, Broadhead Manor is, a, is another great location. I've been to about four or five times. I mean, that's got tons of spirits in there. Uh, and you're looking at uh, three levels, uh, 60,000 square feet. Wow. And it's, it's massive, but it's a great time out there. They play, they really play with the altar. They got, he's got elementals upstairs on the third floor, you know, because in the back there's a train tracks where there's, um, uh, in, in the Imperial mounds out there. Really? Yeah. And with the train tracks being made, it actually pushed it all towards and under the school because the school is back in 1906 wow so yeah it's it's a very interesting spot yeah, you too just, yeah you, you don't disturb that ground and right if it's been disturbed with railroad tracks yeah i think somebody's going to be a little upset yeah i mean you, you know, got limestone I mean, too in the 1906 part well, there's a lot of limestone in the uh, Wisconsin area if you, if you look uh, at, at the landscape. Right. And you the know. ley lines, too. I mean, it's, yeah, I like to see where some of these ley lines connect up to, too, and go t check them out. It'd be interesting. I mean, I, I've lived, I don't know about you, Darren, but I've lived here all my life, pretty much. I was yep, born I in Boy, but. We lived in Wisconsin. The hospital I you was born with, or the, you know, we either, you know, South Beloit, so it's like right on the border. Mm -hmm. So the hospital or the house we lived in was, you know, in one state, you know, you get the picture. But yep. anyway, I was pretty much born and raised in, you know, raised in the Madison area. I went to school pretty much all my life in Madison area. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I've traveled a lot. And there was that one spot and people say, oh, it's a joke. It was, but you look at it, there is a lot of natural occurrences throughout the globe. I know what you're talking about. The wonder spot in the Dell. I just was going to say that. Yes. I right, was going to make right. a joke, but then it's like, I knew you were going to go there. Yep. That's in, see, uh, by Wisconsin Dell's that, that, area. My my buddy Mark, he never really got a chance to visit that spot before it was gone. Yeah, and, and that it did. That's that one little spot, and I don't know how they did it. I still think there's some geological force of nature there that creates it so that gravity doesn't exist, or the laws of gravity cease to exist in that spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. It's too bad that they tore that down too. Yeah, well, and there's a lot of things that got destroyed in the state of Wisconsin that shouldn't have been. Right. But um, you know, Sanitarium Hill and all that area. Now it's just a a path, basically. Um. But I mean, it, it, there's so much stuff out there yet we can still uh, investigate and do stuff and. Um, you know, I'm I'm one of those people that like to want to find the mysterious steps in the woods. Yeah. You know, yeah. but the the bad part is you got to walk five miles into the woods. <laughs> yeah, there's a and and there's a lot of woods that cover Wisconsin. Oh yes, there is. I mean, the Kettle Moraine forests take up a good portion of our state. Yeah, you know? and then it's said to be Bigfoot in there too, the upper and lower. I believe that. You know, I've talked to God. What the hell is his name? I see. I'm not a very big Bigfoot kind of person. Finding, unless I actually see it. Finding Jay. Finding Jay. Yeah, I heard of that one. Yeah. Uh, Jay. Jay. Yeah. If Mark was here. He he'd know the guy's last name or be able to pronounce it. But anyway, um, he won't tell us. We were he. He's kind of a busy guy. We we're trying to hook up with him to go Bigfooting out there, but. I get a lot of 
reports from people that know that I do this, like I'm sure you do from friends and, you know, mm -hmm. friends of friends or whatever. Right. There's a highway that runs right to the middle. All right. I think it's 59. It's got a ton of activity for Bigfoot crossing there. It goes from like Eagle to Palma Palmyra. Eagle okay. to Palmyra. Yep. Okay. That highway has got a shit ton of activity and sightings through there. Yeah. And you're talking about Bray Road. Well, <laughs> Bray Road, Road has got like uh, from there. UFO that... sightings and stuff like that. And oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, Bray Road has everything from Bigfoot. Uh, because it's not a real good thing, but it's like a shadow, like real close and stuff to the cam mm -hmm. that you'd swear it's like a Bigfoot, like, you know, a sil silhouette of Bigfoot. And if you look at the sky and zoom in just right, you'll see like some UFOs, like he's sitting there looking at them up in the sky. There's like five or six of them. Yeah. And it's like, what the hell is that shit? And and these pictures are like taken in sequence, like three every time it's triggered. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. You know. And yeah, I've got some of that stuff on my hard drive still that that we that the owner was willing to let go near to share with us. Right. Some of it, he he's like, uh, uh this one's staying with me. It's too good. People have offered me too much money for it, and I don't want somebody making money off this picture, other no. than me, you know. No, oh, yeah, I understand that. But he still showed it to us, and yeah. and 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 the stuff this guy's got down there is just unbelievable and unexplainable. Right. You know. And, and and it's a shame our government has to be so closed-minded sometimes. And and what I mean about the government is it's like DNR. That's that's still government, mm -hmm. right? We've got the uh, what was that one? Uh, Black Cat Mountain or Big Cat Mountain State Park mm. over by Hillsboro. In that area? Not familiar with it. Linda Godfrey and her son did a oh. thing on it. Godfrey, now that sounds familiar because I, I ran yeah, into Linda a guy. Linda passed away not too long ago, but her and her son did a documentary on it, and it was done for the Milwaukee Paranormal Conference because that's when it was released during COVID because it was all online that year. Everything yeah. was online. and. Um, they were talking about a black panther being sighted around that area. Hmm. DNR is like, oh, they don't exist. <laughs> right. There's hmm. no such thing. But black panther, from what I understand, is just a cat. Mo most of the time, so leopard or jaguar with that that disease that 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 makes them all black kind of like the opposite of albinoism mm -hmm. all right now i wonder why if it's called the milwaukee panthers now why can't that ha oh that can't happen to a cougar but yet it happens to a jaguar and a, and a panther or a jaguar and a leopard but yet you're telling me it can't ha happen to any species from the the feline no just just those two yeah so it doesn't exist in wisconsin well mm -hmm. why can't it be a black mountain lion oh those don't exist that's the dnr's official thing but yet this thing's been spotted and they've got pretty good pictures and photos and video of this thing you can obviously tell it's not a house cat yeah I mean, obviously it's feline, but it's much larger than a house cat. Right. No, that don't exist. It's it. It doesn't exist. That's what they say. They want you to get it out of your mind. That's why. <laughs> well, it just kind of 
ticks me off that they say it ain't possible, but yet it is. Right. It's a lot of things possible. Like we said, a whole bunch of possibilities. You know, you got all these closed-minded people, and if some of them, these governments would just open their thing, they could help with the research by being a central location for the documentation of all the sightings mm -hmm. or something, you know. No, they can't do that. <laughs> but I want to go to that state park one of these days. It's it's uh, it's over by Hillsboro. Yeah. So, and I go out there every now and then anyways, and it's just one of these days I'll go and if anything else, I'm going to get some awesome pictures. Right. Above that, the trees and stuff, because that park is just another one of those ones in Wisconsin where it's just breathtaking. You have know, you uh, seen a Talzon State Park at all? A what? A state park called a Talzon State Park. Astalon State Park. Is that what it's called? Yes. Okay. So I heard something about that with uh, the water there. Okay, you're talking about um, Rock it's, Lake. It's supposed to bring kind of sexual tension. <laughs> well, no. Here's here. I don't know about that, but the the water. Um, it's it's. Hold on. I'll see if I can get. It. It's supposed to be a temple on it too, right? <clears throat> pyramids. Pyramids. That's Underwater cool. pyramids are in that lake. Okay. But Astalon State Park itself is very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Now that's closer to the Milwaukee area, isn't it? No, 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 no. Or is that it's, uh, it's Lake Mills? It's like right around Lake Mills, Johnson Creek. Okay. Uh, Dodge County. Right. Dodge right. and Jefferson County area. Okay. More that would make sense. County than Dodge. Yeah. I've but heard. anyway, there's. It's got. It was Native American land, obviously, like most of it was, but that was like one of their encampments or whatever um forts i don't know but anyway it gets because the river is like right there there's a river right there you can obviously see there's mounds burial mounds or something they're huge and they're all over the park mm -hmm. okay there's one in particular and god another reason to hate the government um, called the Indian Bur uh, the Princess Burial Mound. Okay. It is said that if you stand on her mound, reading the the rock or the the whole thing about her that's like supposed to be there, you'll hear shells rattling behind you, and when you turn around to look, it's it stops. And the reason for shells is because she used to wear belts and she was buried with them that were made out of seashells. So is this like an urban legend type deal? No, it goes further. Now, the reason this happens is because they decided, I don't know who they were. I'm, I'm sure it was a government of some sort. Decided we're going to... Um, you know, dig up this area. They dug up her bones, put them on display in a museum down in Milwaukee. <laughs> Got all the tribe, uh, quite a few of the Native American tribes protesting that museum and, and, and stuff in Milwaukee. And, and to this day, her bones have not been returned to that mound. They, they lay rest in storage in the basement of that museum. Jeez. Yep. Yeah, time to take a trip to a museum then. We, I don't know which museum for sure, but I'm sure we could figure that out. But when we were out there 
I didn't get a chance to because Mark's like going well, on his private property. You shouldn't. And I figured just crossing over to to take a look and do a little quick pictures and stuff wasn't going to hurt, you know. So next time we go out there, that's what I'm doing. But we had some equipment failure happen out mm -hmm. there to the point, and it happened like after we got home. You know, all our our cards were file corrupted, and there was no way we could get the files off. I tried, and and I know computers and know how to retrieve stuff. I've been around them for quite a long time before the right. internet. And uh, we had one of our EMF meters, and I'm walking around with it, and I look down, and it's like just you know get the needles getting buried, you know, and going all wacky. And I'm like, fuck, what the hell? Maybe I'm messing up and I'm jiggling it. So I put it right down on the wooden steps that they made into one of these mounds, right? Mm -hmm. And it's still going nuts. And we're filming it with a camera just to prove it all. We get back and all that footage is just wiped out. Jeez. That's interesting. We've been happened. back there. We've been back there two or three times since then, and that happens at Broadhead Banner too, from what I understand. And, and there's nothing around there, electric-wise, that would set the EMF meters off like that. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little interesting. Yeah. You know, <laughs> It was one of the more interesting places that that we've been back to more than once. All right. I haven't been out there yet. <laughs> been always trying to get something to go out there with me, but the... <laughs> uh, so. I'd like to get I'd like to have the money it's like some of those TV people would have. Yeah. You know, so I get just a small boat, you know, motor on it and all, you know, small fishing boat doesn't need to be much. <clears throat> and go out on the rock lake with an arrow, you know, uh, an underwater submersible that you can control, yeah. you know, with a camera and get some real good footage of those pyramids. That would be interesting. But I can hear, I, I hear that if you're on a boat out there on a clear day and the water is nice and calm, you mm -hmm. can see them from the surface. <laughs> That's what I've heard, though. Interesting. Uh, but oh, it looks like we're almost up to an hour. Yep, uh, we're getting there. So, what else? So what you else like is up for you? About? What's that? What else is up for you that you got coming up? Um. So. So tomorrow, like I said, I'll be at the, the museum. Uh, I got Small Town Paranormal coming. Uh, check those guys out. They're pretty cool. Pretty cool guys. Um, and uh, the 24th, I'll be at the Sheboygan Asylum for an investigation. Um, Let me and, know how that goes. Yeah. Uh, this really, will be my third time there. I, I've, I've had the people. That, I don't know if they're the, the ones still running it or not. but. I had the people on my show once. They were okay. supposed to come on again. Something happened on their end. Okay. Um, but I've been trying to contact them because I really want to go to that that place. That is, I mean, it'd be cool to have Insane Asylum check out an asylum. Right. You know? I'm waiting for uh, uh, the Winnebago uh, Mental Institution to go under so I can investigate that here in town. Um but I mean, there's a silent point here in town. It's kind of a little crazy. Uh, well, we got. Uh, I might have to come your way, and you'll have to give us a tour. Yeah, I mean, there's That's there's a uh, a uh, cemetery that is quote unquote un uh, like not known. It's kind of hidden away. It's got over uh, was it uh, 750 bodies in there? Wow. Um, and it, they're just markers basically. Um, and, 
let's see. There's a lot of stuff that we're trying to plan on doing, like going to Broadhead uh, for an investigation. I got to still get that going. Um, I want to get to Melvern Manor, if possible. Um, that's in Iowa, uh, Melvern, Iowa. Um, uh, you know, Cambry House and Farm, uh, Nauvoo, Illinois. Uh, definitely got to check that out. That's right on the Mississippi River. Wow. It's a really nice place. Yeah, I like um, being out there by the by the Mississippi River. Yeah, she's got some Indian Indian Barrier Mountains out there as well. You can't investigate those, uh, which I you know I wouldn't anyway. Um, uh, just out of you know respect. Yeah. Uh, but there's there's quite a few things. Uh, September twentieth and twenty first, I'll be going to uh, Edinburgh Manor in um, Iowa. So that'll be pretty cool. And that's a location you can get something during the daytime and nighttime. Uh, those are locations I like uh, typically, a lot, you know, a lot more because, you know, you could continuously investigate for 48 hours. Yeah, you know? we did that with, uh, we did that with uh, Far School in yep, Maxwell, Iowa. That yeah, was, I've been, I've that been was there. a pretty active place for us too that day. Yeah, it's a it's a neat location. I've been there once though. Um I think it was nineteen, two thousand nineteen when I was out there last. I don't remember when we were out there. We were out there, we did uh, a couple of things with Dale Kazmarek. He invited us along for the trip. Um uh, actually no, got... twenty one. Twenty one is when I was out there last. And we also did the the Buddy Holly crash light. Okay. That that was cool just to be there you know mm -hmm. being a music fan and a fan of music it was just so surreal just to be there right you know, that uh i i think there's another um glen beulah school uh that's another place i'd like to check out i heard it's extremely haunted there too the cemetery is haunted as well um, there's a whole array of things that we still don't know what's here in Wisconsin that's oh, that can be yeah. haunted. I mean, it's yeah. like I said, talked about High Cliff Park. I mean, or uh, State Park. I mean, that's connected. I did not know that that was connected to Canada. Really? Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. Um, but the, there's lots of stuff that goes on with that. Um, we talked about the uh high and low um kettle moraines yeah you know um, kettle moraines full of activity so i mean it's it, there's a lot of stuff you can find here i i love i love urban legends um i think urban legends is a is a great way to break up investigations and and uh do something different you know oh yeah um i find them very fascinating especially the the boy scout lane in Stevens Point area. Uh, yeah. We were out there, and let me tell you, that's the first time I've ever set up a uh, uh, a laser grid outside in, in, in the woods. And uh, I had um, uh, one of those uh, megaphones, basically, that, uh, what do you call it? The, it has a, a special mic to it. Um, you can hear far away things. The bionic ear. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and for, I like this, it's got a gun to it with a, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I was using that out there and, um, um, and my God, it, it was, it was crazy. It felt like things were just around us, just circling us. Uh, things are running in, in, in the, in the woods, like. And it wasn't like sound like animals. It actually sounded like little kids running. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's, that's a crazy spot there. That's out in Stevens Point, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. out way out in Stevens Point. Um, we did the Bloody Bride Bridge. We tried that one out. Eh, didn't get much there, but we were down in a tunnel part, and the tunnel part is interesting. Um, there, there was one I can't remember 
see if I can look it up. I'm paradox I'm like that's what it's it's a paradox like but I mean yeah, got... here it is. Here it is. We went to we went to you, you want to hear something really scary once? Sure. My wife and I, it was just my wife and I. We had a little bitty Ford Taurus, so we didn't have the vehicle I got now where I would have felt much safer in. Because mm -hmm. uh, we got the police interceptor version of the Ford Explorer. So it's totally like, you know, it's like driving a tank. Right. Um, and Ripon, uh, Fond du Lac County. Collin Road is the, the actual name of the road. Okay. It's called the it's an urban legend. It's called Witch Road. Oh yes. Yes, I know about okay. that one. You, know you about can't that? actually go on there. They blocked it off. We Somebody went on would... there. We got on there. Really? We, we we got on there. My wife and I somehow managed to get back in there. We managed to get Right. I mean, we had the the GPS and everything right located right where that her her cabin was. Right. Mm -hmm. And we get there and oh, my God, I, I shit you not. There was like. At least 10 guys walking around with rifles. <laughs> OK, and they were totally they had uh, a bobcat out there. That's what that thing is, bobcat. Yeah. And, and they were destroying, you know, like turning it to rubble. They were looking like they were getting ready to, for a bonfire. <laughs> and it's like, I didn't get out of my car. We didn't stop to take pictures, nothing. I started seeing those guys walking around with guns. And it's like, let's just keep moving that way. Yeah. Somebody owns the road now, I guess. So, but so this that, was yeah, like, Back in 2019, 2020, I mean, we just, every now and then my wife is like, well, let's go take a road trip. You need to get out of the house. Yeah. You've been cooped up too long. Let's go. You know, and I'll be hesitant and stuff, but we did it that day and it's like. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was your take on uh, haunted objects? Oh, I, it, I believe it's possible. Yeah. I mean, you know, somebody carries around or wears a belt buckle for many years, there might be an attachment to it, you know? Right. See, I can't stand haunted dolls and stuff like that. It's just like, every time I see one, I want to punt it. <laughs> you but, know, it uh, just depends. I mean, I, you know, like I said, it's got to be the story or, or whatever helps. But I mean, you know, do I believe everything's haunted that, that people say? Probably not. Yeah. You know, I mean, but if like my grandpa was carrying around a flask and that's the thing he carried around and treasured the most and he passed away, I believe there might be attachment to it or something like that. Because to him, that was his most valuable prized possession, you know. Right. Right. Well, I was talking to a buddy of mine and uh, uh, Travis Wazaki, uh, Wazaki Paranormal. Um, he makes a lot of REM pods and, and, and gear. And I'm like, hey, let's, let's try something different. And he's like, okay, well, what do you want to try? I said, let's make a uh, coffee mug into a REM pod and then being able to open it and put the grounds in there so they can smell the grounds. Because in this day and age, okay, there is a lot of coffee drinkers out there now. Well, there was back then, too, if you think about it. Right. Yeah, so I mean, coffee's that one... been around longer than you and I have been around. Right. More so, I, I think it's more so uh, in the 2000s and now, it's gotten really big, you know. Well, that's and... because of those coffee houses uh right i can't even think of the name because i don't go starbucks yep starbucks yep um 
And and that's just it. I was like, well, you know, the if there's a recent person that has passed and their favorite thing was to drink coffee, let's use this as a trigger object, you know? Mm-hmm. So I mean, some people may look at that as like, well, that's that's kind of dumb. It's kind of crazy, that's weird. Why would you do that? Kind of a creative idea. That's smart. You know, it's like I I look at things <laughs> and wherever I go to a location, I I study it and I'm like, hmm, this would be a good REM pod trigger object to take to this location only for this location. Yeah, I I could see that. I could see that happening a lot. So you gotta uh, think outside the box once in a while. Right, right. And the newest thing I'm 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 studying on and I'm gonna try is I'm using one of these. Oh um Metrodome. Yeah. They use it to tune pianos and guitars and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yep. That's my newest uh experiment I'm gonna be trying. Hmm. Uh, well, it was good having you on. We gotta cut this short. I think oh, that's fine. throw after us. Um, so it was nice having you on. We're gonna have to have you back. I'm hoping to catch up with you this summer too. Yeah, that would be really cool. I'm gonna have About to come the to your neighborhood. I'll give it a tour. I'm gonna have to come to your backyard there. Sure. So it was good having you. Thanks and for having me on. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Sorry, Mark couldn't make it. He's got internet issues. Uh, we'll be back next week. Until then, stay safe and remember, anything's possible. Have a good weekend, folks.